So this is going to be a little bit of a different teardown than normal. Normally I kind of prep this stuff, but this is a switch fabric module for a Nexus 9500 series switch. I thought maybe it'd be a little bit more interesting to show the process since this is probably not something the average person is going to get to tear down. Unfortunately, this module got damaged through mishandling. And as you can see with the way the light's reflecting on that one there, that plug's damaged. Those pins are well beyond repair, along with these pens over here, and I'm sure there's other ones in these, plus like this piece of plastic on the shroud is busted. It looks like there might be a few bad pins. Basically, this thing's a lost cause. Um, I don't foresee anybody wanting to repair it, like either switching out the damaged ports or, you know, maybe taking the, what I assume are custom ASICs off the board and putting them on a different board. It's not really something that has a good aftermarket value due to the fact that the type of data center that's going to need something like this can't afford downtime and can't afford risk using a used item on their switches. But babbling all over, I'm going to tear this down. Quite a few screws holding this together. These screws are just holding on the top plate basically. Looks like there's some screws on the sides. There we go. And this thing is a pretty long unit. It's just about three feet long. Um, if memory serves correct, they measure 32 inches. All right. And there's surprisingly not much in here. I forget what this particular module is rated for. I I think it was 12,800 gigabits of traffic or 1.2 or 12.8 uh, terabits of traffic. But looks like from here, hmm. Oops. I am not sure what the easiest way to get this out is. Side screws. And that's. There we go. And one more on the side. Now this back support should just lift straight up. Assuming I got all the screws. Oh, I did not. And there's a zip tie I need to disconnect by just breaking it. Disconnect the power connector and see if we can remove that to 
get out of my way. Alright, these get screwed back in, I think. Hmm. I'm not quite sure how this comes apart. I think I'll just leave that there. It is pretty impressive. If I can get my camera pointing in the right spot. There we go. This must have had some serious power draw. I can't tell. Let's see if we can find a gauge marking. Yeah, so two 8 gauge wires. And these are actually really nice wires because they're really soft and they're maneuverable. I would guess nice, really small conductors inside of there. Um, I'm not sure what this would be for. Maybe some sort of uh, data interface. Because I doubt they would need power wires this big and then have a bunch of tiny little wires. But let's zoom back out. All right, I believe the heat sinks are screwed through the, to the bottom. Nope, I'm wrong. I just gotta find all the little screws. Really, I guess I can this off anyways. A little daughter board on the board. I'm not sure what it would do. There's an Altera Cyclone 4 processor on there. Let's see if I can get that in focus. There we go. I would assume that that's probably some flash memory. Not sure what that chip does. And, oh wow, a bunch of RAM chips in the bottom side of the board for whatever is under this heat sink. I might have to grab a tool to deal with that real quick, so I'll be back. All right. After a little bit of destructive <laughs> removal of the heatsink, kind of accomplished nothing. I'm not sure what that chip does, but yeah. So that's the daughter board on the uh, fabric module. This must require some processing for management or whatnot. Let's see if this mounts. Go through. Yep. Just gonna have to remove these standoffs. frame. Let's zoom that back out. There we go. I think this should be the last screw. Let's find out here. Oh. I'm gonna put this aside for a moment. Not much to the steel support structure. Um, just some screw mounts and then a few uh, I believe those would be locating pins to help get the board in the right position so net connector I'm not quite sure how that goes in I'm guessing it goes in from the front oh, all right I understand now this slides down like this if, if you push the pin in far enough and it comes out. Easy enough. 
I'm not sure why I didn't recognize that sooner. There's a close up of the uh, power connector for this board. I believe. Alright, I'm gonna grab the board. Just looking at it visually, nope, they are different. This is the board side. It locks into the uh, board with two little side clips that are spring loaded through the plastic where the plastic was molded. I kind of wonder where all that power is going, but that must be an inner layer. Not much to see on the bottom side of the board. Quite a few. Uh, bypass caps and passes under the CPUs. It's got some power regulation, which there's more on the top and bottom, both sides of, of the power regulation. Guessing that these are just VRMs for the CPUs. This one's probably going to there, and this one's probably going to there based on, I don't know, on this. Maybe the traces are on the other side, but, um, yeah, that's the bottom. Not much to see there. There's quite a few passives though. Definitely don't see that many on a computer board, nor like normal desktop board. And this is the other side of where the of the VR, VRMs that kind of line up at the bottom. pretty good sized fuses by the power input, which would make sense considering it's getting fed by 8 gauge wire. Alright, now the exciting part, seeing what's under the heat sinks. I would assume these are going to be all just the same thing. Another Broadcom chip. That's cool. Hmm. Thermal compounds, nothing too exciting. Basically looks like the same type of stuff that computer manufacturers use. Kind of... Um, how to describe it. Kind of crusty, grainy stuff. It's not not quite quite as liquid as uh, some of the more fancy stuff that people use for gaming PCs. I think I'm going to try to look one of these up. Just curious to see what the internet says it is, if it's something that's even searchable. Broadcom BCM 568-50-A2-KFS-BG Of course, Digikey and Mauser have them on their uh, sites. I'm not sure how they uh, populate that information for everything. What do they say it is? Just says various 10 gig multi-layer switch. I gotta find something a little better, probably. Makes sense that they'd be a switching chip of some sort. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think, at least at my skill level, I don't think this is something I'm going to be able to look up. Hmm. Looks like these might support 
104 ports worth of 10 gigabit ethernet or 32 ports of 40 gigabit ethernet each. See, it looks like there's a support document. Oh, no, not something I'm able to see because I <laughs> am just an average Joe and I don't have a Broadcom account. Hmm. Well, sorry for a boring video. <laughs> I uh, don't really do much planning or anything on these. I just kind of wing them. I know this is something the average person probably wouldn't get to see the inside of, though. I don't fully understand the little bit of information I got. I, I'm not surprised that these are switching chips. That would make sense since um, this is... The interface board for the modules that go into the Nexus 9500 series switches. I'm impressed the amount of power it needs, but after thinking about it a little bit, I'm wondering if maybe this board doesn't need that power for the processors, but maybe it's, it's delivering power to the um, switch modules that end up plugging into it. So. I don't know, like I said, sorry, this is probably, probably not one of my best videos, but hopefully someone will find the inside of this, this fabric module interesting. Definitely not what I was expecting. I would have figured a little bit more chip population maybe, or something a little fancier. I don't even think these heat sinks are too light. They're, they're just solid aluminum heat sinks with fans, so <laughs> I don't know. So thanks for watching.